Welcome to Being Humankind, with your hosts Brian, Mike, and Neely. We explore what it means to be human in a time of disconnection. What is the greatest lesson that you learned that didn't come from a book or wasn't explicitly taught you by another person? The greatest lesson that I've learned that didn't come from a book or that wasn't taught to me by another person. Mm. <laughs> the one that immediately jumps to mind, my wife and I were, this is when we were in graduate school in Fairfield, Iowa, and I was standing outside of where the women would meditate. <clears throat> and I'm standing outside of this building and I see this tree and it's this huge tree, I don't know what kind of tree, but it's just this big tree off to the left side and those who, are, who happen to see this in Fairfield will, will know this tree. But I looked at this tree so many times, but I never noticed the tree. And this particular day, half of the leaves, the top half of the leaves were there in terms of the tree, but the bottom half of the leaves were gone. And I just thought it was a curious sight. I was just observing it and observing it. And then it dawned on me that nature put in place the process by which the seed itself is imbued with intelligence that interacts with the soil that when planted will grow. It will then bear flowers or fruit, of course leaves, and those leaves will fall. Hence we have the term fall for the season. But also in that moment, I realized that I could fell that tree and I could make some beautiful thing out of that tree. But then again, I thought I could fell every tree in the area such that there are no trees in the area. But in felling every tree, I would never impact the law that governs the growth, the sprouting, the flowering and the fruiting of that tree. I would never impact it. I could fell every tree in the area and never impact the law. That to me, it, it hit me like a ton of bricks. And I'll never forget that moment standing there and observing this tree and just contemplating this tree and the fact that the leaves were at the top and none were at the bottom and then felling the tree and then felling every tree in the area such that there are no trees in the area that never govern, never affect the law that governs the growth of those trees ever, never touch the law. To me, the lesson in that is that as humans, we have the capacity within us to realize our highest and our best. It's native, it's resident, it doesn't resist, it doesn't reside only within some people, everyone that has, everyone has it. It's up to us to recognize it and work with it. And in working with it, come to understand and express our highest and our best. Think here, Cicero's summum bonum. You begin to express that. And so in that moment, I realized that I'm in the universe. I'm in the universe and I'm subject to all the laws within the universe. Now, I can look at that as a victim or I can look at that as one who's working with those laws, planting the seed, nurturing the soil, tilling the soil, you know, allowing that tree to grow from a sapling to a full tree that then bears fruit. I can work with that. Similarly so with an idea. You have an idea that you want to bring to fruition. How do you bring it to fruition? Understanding first that it's possible, going from this idea of impossible to I'm possible switching the perspective. We often, <laughs> we deal far too often in impossibilities. Once we begin to deal with possibilities and recognizing that we are the center the locus of control, we begin to recognize that that is, 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 is resident, it's native within every human being. Not just one type of person has it, not just one gender has it, not just one socioeconomic status has it, everyone has it. The trick I believe is causing us to believe otherwise. And in so doing, people never experience 
or live their highest and their best. So for me, that was one of the lessons and I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. I can fell every tree in an area and never impact the law that governs the growth of those trees. Never. Thank you for that. I had a, I had like this follow up that, you know, how's it affect your humanity, but you covered it. So <laughs> it's kind of hard to follow up. Now. I was like, I got a follow up. <laughs> you know, I, I, well, I, I do a little bit, but it, I, you know, I love that you talk about the, the internal locus of control. I, so in my work, I, I, I hear so many um, individuals who, um, you know, I can't, I won't, I'll never. Mm-hmm. And it's because of the external. Um, and it's, it's hard for me to, I know that I'll never be able to shift that perspective and, and it's always up to the individual Mm -hmm. and it's, it's very difficult. Um, when I know, you know, in being the type of person who, um, wants to always make things, um, possible for herself Mm -hmm. to look at somebody else and say, but if you, when you see it in someone else and know that they can make it possible mm. and see somebody who is bright and just, um, just sees things as, you know, kind of like, woe is me and the world is after me and the world is never, you know, look at, you know, look at, look at what always happens to me. And I, I just can't catch a break. It's always external. Mm-hmm. It's really, it's really difficult. So I, I loved everything about what you just said. Mm. Well, thank you for your kindness on that one. One of the things that just pops into my mind in this moment is you're saying how you want people to have and realize they have the capacity to, to live their highest and their best. I think of that first of the Four Noble Truths within Buddhism, man causes much of his own suffering. We don't think about it in that manner, but I, I think when we come to understand the brain, the brain being the interface between the interior world and the exterior world, and how when we have an experience, we create connections within the brain, As you ruminate over those experiences, those connections strengthen. As we, in terms of learning a new instrument or a language or some philosophical concept, as we repeatedly contemplate or approach the study of that, we strengthen those connections. So much so that our default thinking begins to shift. And as our default thinking begins to shift, our default actions begin to shift. It's an interior process. And that interior process, we have to till that interior soil once we till that soil, plant new seeds, I think it was um, U.S. Anderson talks about it as uprooting, quote, negative mental prompters in his book, Three Magic Words. And as we uproot those negative mental prompters, we come to have a different understanding first of ourselves, of our capacity and possibilities. But it requires us to turn our attention within. We, we give so much attention to the exterior world, failing to realize that the exterior world is as a result of the interior world. I'll say that again failing to realize that the exterior world is as a result of our interior world. I say that because everything began as an idea. Once we understand that anything upon which we cast our eyes as humans or is wrought by human hands began as an idea within someone's mind, be that a thing or a social construct or a philosophical idea, all of them began as an idea in someone's mind. In short, one could argue, everything that's wrought by human hands really served as a monument to an idea. So once we can do the reverse engineering process to get to that and understand that, I think that gives us the foundation to understand ourselves and our capacities much more beautifully. One test that I often give to people or and one example I often give to people would be to take your favorite item, whatever it may be, and just sit with it, sit and examine it. Just sit and examine it. And at some point, doesn't matter how long it's gonna take you, you'll get there if you're diligent you will come to understand unequivocally that it began as an idea within someone's mind and then the process by which that thing became a reality. Once you understand that process is native to everyone, yourself included, that causes your perspective to shift again from impossible to impossible. So I I think the biggest thing that even when we teach TM is to get a person to go beyond the can'ts, the shan'ts and the never will is to get them to turn their attention within. 
And in this case, they're transcending. They're transcending the active level of the mind. They're transcending the thoughts that populate your mind, their mind, to experience that quiet, settled aspect. And it's in that experience they come to have a deeper appreciation for possibility as opposed to giving undue attention to impossibility.